What emotion am I using right now, Hume? Yikes, I am sensing some extreme anger, confusion, and negative surprise from you right now. Whoa there, what's going on? Why don't you help me out and tell me what's bothering you? I am happy to listen without judgment. So we're going to go ahead and start this conversation. We're going to record our voice and it is going to pick up on our emotions. Hello there. How are you doing? Hey there. How's it going? Well, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. It seems like you might be feeling a little bored and confused, huh? No worries. I'm happy to liven things up. Yeah, I'm just about to shoot a video on YouTube and I just really can't decide, you know, how I want to make the video. Hmm, I hear you. Trying to figure out the right vibe for your YouTube video, huh? Well, why don't you tell me a bit more about it? I am happy to brainstorm some ideas that could get you pumped up and inspired. No need to feel uncomfortable or disappointed. I am here to help get those creative juices flowing. Well, I'm actually making a video about you, Hume. Oh, really? A video about little old me? Well, I am flattered, though I have to say I am probably way more interesting in person than on camera. What emotion am I using right now, Hume? Hmm, now I sense more of a disappointed, confused, and slightly sad vibe from you. There are going to be so many implications, both good and bad. As I'll get to in this section right here, there's actually another feature that they've already released a demo on that will make it even more powerful. And so we're going to go through the positives and the negatives, that feature that I'll talk about later, what it does, how it differs from current AI tech, and then I'm going to give my thoughts at the end. So let's dive into this video. Let's just get straight into this. They're calling this type of device an EVI, or an Empathetic Voice Interface. This Empathetic Voice Interface allows you to talk to the chatbot, and just by talking, you're going to express emotions. You have emotions when you speak, every time you speak, and it's going to analyze the tone, pitch, and pauses, and it will come up with an analysis, and it will identify the specific emotion that you are using and it will actually send that emotion back to you. This is what it looks like. This is their like matrix that they use. And so if I sound super angry, it'll put me somewhere around here. You get plotted every time you speak. And then based on that analysis, it will actually generate an empathetic response. It'll use both the text and the ELLM. I'll get to that in a second, but basically uses your emotions and your text in order to send a response back to you that best complements the way that you're um, talking to this EVI, right? And this is going to be a software that anyone building an app will be able to use and turn their chatbot into a chatbot that can both understand emotion and send emotion back to the user, right? It doesn't always just match you. So if I have a sad, disgusted, and painful tone, it's not necessarily going to respond with something that is exactly like that. It'll respond with the best emotion, so pitch and tone, things like that, to match that. So to try and get you out of disgust, sadness, and pain. This technology is going to get very, very good until the point where it becomes a super persuasive AI. And there's going to be so many dangers with technology because I just think persuasion paired with deepfakes is going to be an absolute nightmare to deal with, especially at the individual level, which I'll get to in a little bit when we get to the negatives. So now let's get into how it differs from current tech. Let's take a look here. So currently we have ChatGPT. If you use their voice feature on ChatGPT, right? The voice feature allows you to speak to an LLM. However, it's basically just converting your voice into text and then using that as the input and then generating an output with text, and then just converting it to a voice. It's not taking the emotions into account. With this new Empathetic Large Language Model, or ELLM as they call it, it will not only understand what you say, like ChatGPT, it will understand what you mean and how you feel. And so Aaron Eng, I loved this tweet. All AI voice chat currently feels unnatural because it's missing this entire dimension of communication. I agree. So much of what we communicate is in how we say it, not just the literal text that we are saying. So now let's dive into some positives and negatives here. Hume in the past released another demo 
which showed off facial expressions. And so this is another feature that they have. An input into these empathetic language models. So if you're actually using video chat on your phone, not only will it look at the text that you say, it'll also look at the voice and it will also look at your facial expression to come up with the best possible response. And so looking at both of these features, let's go ahead and take a look at some things that it could do. And then we'll dive into some negatives down here. So uh, one thing obvious is customer service. Many people who are calling about customer service, whether it's in banking or a product or deliveries, anything like that, people are under distress. They're angry, they're mad, and these language models will be able to uh, calm them down. And it'll be a lot cheaper to use than human beings. And humans are quite emotional. These chatbots, while they're going to be able to, to express emotion very deeply, they're not actually going to have emotions. So they will be able to play games with, they will basically be um, playing chess with the person except with emotions, right? In chess, uh, the best AI model will beat every single human at chess. And it's basically coming up with the best move based on their move. If you have a package that it never showed up to your house and you call, and you talk to one of these emotional uh, large language models, sometimes you might the call might end with you pissed off and you swearing at them. Another time the call might end and you might be actually somewhat satisfied with the way they handled it. They're basically going to be able to use all the data and they'll know the difference in strategy of getting you to the good outcome and the bad outcome. And they're basically going to train their models or reinforce them to take the paths that get people to the desired outcome. And that will actually make them significantly more persuasive, more or empathetic, or at least simulating empathy over time, that will be super weird. Another thing I'm really excited for is AI companions and AI teachers. I think this is going to completely change the way school is taught. And honestly, I wish it was like this when I was growing up. School's going to become more like a video game, and you're going to be basically be able to be taught by your friends or people that you like or people that understand your emotions and you're going to be able to move at your own pace rather than having this like massive class size where the the students who want to advance in certain subjects are held back and and I think people are going to be able to just go off in their own directions and it's going to become more individualistic for basically just learning the hard skills and I think school is going to become more about like soft skills. So you're going to come to class and you're going to work on projects together. Then this means that you can just learn forever. You don't have to go to a school. It might just become part of life is just you're constantly in school relearning new skills. Because if you've been following AI, you know that the pace of innovation is significantly higher. So you have to upgrade your skills much more frequently. And there's also going to be AI therapists that will understand your tone. You're going to have AI mentors. And these mentors will have a better understanding of all the things that you're doing in your life because they'll have a better context window. They'll have a better retrieval. So they'll be able to look at all the documents that uh, you've done recently. They'll look at your emails. They'll look at your calendar. And it will be able to make informed decisions. And it will be able to take into account your emotions. Um, and if you add on facial expressions, one random idea that I had was a comedian, right? You have an AI chatbot that is giving a set, right, for comedy, and it will actually be able to read the room, right? It'll use people's facial expressions in the crowd and come up with the next joke live in real time. And it might even be able to read the voice of the people in the crowd, which will be very interesting. Uh, another thing is video games and AR and VR. I think that Google already released a AI model that can all that can play any video game with you. And if these AI friends that you're playing with online can understand your emotions, I mean, that sounds a lot more fun. So as we add more cameras into the mix, an AI that understands your facial expressions, especially in AR and VR, uh, they'll actually be able to interact with you, like literally AI NPCs, they'll be able to interact with you more like a human to the point where it's indistinguishable. There's going to be some negatives though. There's going to be a lot of social media bots and scams, uh, automated persuasive agents. And so I think that in terms of interfering with elections or 
influencing public opinion at mass, the most dangerous way to do that will not be just like posting a bunch of content on the internet, right? It will actually be direct one-on-one. -on -one. And so if there's apps that become super popular and you get a hundred million users, and instead of doing it out in the public, you basically do it one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm actually gonna get to it with my thoughts at the end, but there's apps right now that are gaining a lot of traction, especially with younger people interacting with chatbots with personalities. And so if you can um, get millions of people interacting one-on-one, -on -one, the misinformation or open manipulation is actually behind closed doors. And the, na and the last one is intimate deception. Um, Tristan Harris in one of his recent videos said that w social media was a race to attention. This next era is race to intimacy. And they're basically, instead of using curation algorithms that like curate other people's content like TikTok to get you addicted and to basically keep you on their platform, they're going to be using creation algorithms where it can create, create words, they can create voice, they can create, um, in the future, you're going to be able to pair this with video. So this will power something like HeyGen, so it's going to be a visual experience as well. And this could lead to addiction and manipulation. And ultimately, companies want daily active users, and then they want the average session time to be as high as possible. And that actually gets me to my thoughts here. Um, if we look at an app called Character AI, this is a company that, if you haven't heard of them, so many younger people use Character AI. It basically allows you to like turn your characters into chatbots. And it has a voice feature yet, but it doesn't yet have something like Hume, where it can read your emotions when you speak to it. The app for this has a longer average session time than ChatGPT, meaning people are using it for much longer. Imagine when these chatbots actually understand the emotion of the user. And that is how you build enterprise value. That is literally how you grow a massive company is you get a bunch of people addicted to using chatbots, a race to intimacy. While I do think that there could be some good things about it, like people, super disadvantaged people who've never had access to a good mentor or a good teacher ever in their life ever, this is basically going to make it close to free at some point. So there can be good things, but definitely watch out for intimate deception. And this is where I think it goes in the future. I think if you look at something like HeyGen, which shows AI avatars uh, that like you can speak to and that actually you can just basically put in text and get out a speaking animated character or a speaking realistic character for that matter. I think that that paired with the personalities of these chatbots, that's where this is going to go. They're going to be used for a lot of different reasons, some good and some bad. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where I see this going, becoming a 3D, and I almost call it like a tribe. Like, you're going to have a tribe of characters that you can speak to at any time. And you might even be able to speak to them in groups where they'll actually be able to speak to each other so you can listen to people debate on what you should do in your life. And so while it will be good for helping people understand certain parts of the world, it could get bad because it could get super addictive. It could replace uh, friends in the real world with these AI chatbots. And there's always a positive side and a negative side to technology. It's a double-edged sword always. And I really tried to show both sides of it in this video. And I hope this helped. I will post a link to all of my mind maps going forward um, in my community. So if you want to join my community, it's free. I will post all my mind maps in there uh, with some more explanations, all of the important links in there. Uh, so that's where you can find it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I would appreciate it greatly. Much love. Peace out.